Okay, so today I did something fun. I present to you the world's lamest spot welder. In all of its cube-like, lame-looking, unfinished glory. So let me give you the rundown of this thing. So at the very bottom here, it's got an old scrapped ATX computer power supply that I used for the 12-volt rail. Then over here, you'll see a very sad dismantled USB power brick. And I'll talk about why I needed a separate 5-volt supply a little later. The main controller for the spot welder is one of my favorite boards to use, which is an Arduino Nano, or in my case, a very cheap Chinese knockoff. And this funny device right here is a car starter relay. I use this as a contactor so that it can handle the super high currents that the spot welder has to put out. And I use this because I was too lazy to use MOSFETs. Speaking of being too lazy to use MOSFETs, here are the MOSFETs I use to drive the relay. So let's talk about why I needed the separate 5 volt power supply. Basically, it comes down to the fact that there's voltage referencing issues with the way I'm driving these MOSFETs because I'm driving them right off of a digital pin on the Arduino. Please don't do this, but I'm lazy. It just makes it so I can create a bias voltage for the MOSFETs that aren't referenced to the original negative rail on the 12 volt power supply. These are my spot welding contacts, which are just pieces of copper wire and screw terminals that have a bad habit of getting really warm. As you can see, this device has many fancy important controls, such as switch, switch, and a uh, knob. To demonstrate this more accurately, I'll turn it on. Oh, uh, please don't blow up. This is the main power switch. That's what that does. It's now on. I know, you can tell, right? That beep was very informative. Okay, so now, this knob controls the pulse width. So the time that the spot weld makes the spot weld. And uh, basically that's just how long the relay turns on for. And then the world's best foot switch ever created. That little springy thing right there, I think is out of one of those like, you know, drywall mounty things. It's in here somewhere, maybe. Maybe not. Wait, hold on, would it be in the bucket? Nope. Hello? Oh well. Okay, so I couldn't find it, uh, but it looks something like this. Anyway, and then that switch, it's just a momentary contact switch. I'm pretty sure it's out of a microwave. It's a very complicated mechanism. Yeah. And then that just goes through this cable, which has a little ferrite core to stop interference. And I just wrap the wire around it. Another thing for interference is my five volt power supply is ground reference to a resistor. Because, um, well, if you don't do that, it tends to just fire randomly. That right there is the little piezoelectric speaker that makes all those lovely beeps. And if you go all the way down to the lowest, it beeps at you to let you know you're at its lowest limit. As for a high limit, well, you can just kind of keep going. It's in nanoseconds, so it'll take you about 14 and a half million years to get to a minute, but yeah. Are my wires thick enough? No, they're not. Is this XT60 connector rated for the current? Definitely not. I tested this out with a couple of car batteries already, and the results were, um, well, they weren't spectacular. I was kind of able to weld a couple pieces of nickel strip together with very low consistency of accuracy. I have ordered a real spot welder, so we will be doing a comparison between this and a real one. Yeah, I built this battery bank for it, but I'm pretty sure this thing only kicks out like 40 or 50 amps, which is nowhere as close to what I need. I'd need like a couple more of these. And of course, at one point, I made the genius decision to put 30 volts through it using my power supply to give the weld a bit more kick. Early in the project, I was just planning on using this individual battery, so I thought it'd be smart if I just included a charging circuit for it inside of the cube. So here's a little visual aid to help you understand what happens to an Arduino when there's 31 volts across it. So I'm not really sure if I could call this project a definitive success or failure. I'll have to see when I get the real spot welder how it compares. As for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.